What's up, Crypto Nation? Look, I wanna um, I wanna talk about this real quick. I just ran into this video, um, and they're talking about Trayvon James and BitConnect, and I just wanted to kind of narrate my opinions on it um, as I hear it. So let's go. Uh, let me start this video off by saying that uh, this is just for entertainment and educational purposes. Uh, I'm not a investment professional. I'm not an ass beating professional. I'm not a scammer professional. So uh, everything said in this video is just for your entertainment. Anything you do with this video is at your own risk. But uh, yeah, so we're here to talk about this scumbag, Trevon James, AKA Trevon Brown. I'm loving that I'm hearing that a class action lawsuit has just been filed against BitConnect and this scumbag along with Crypto Nick. So, uh, I w all right, so he starts off the video advising us that he's not a uh, you know a trained professional in any right um which most people do uh here in the crypto space because we're not you know basically we're here showing our journey um some of us uh choose to do it different ways some of us flaunt um some of us are very discreet uh and so on so i'm guessing he's going to be talking about uh, the BitConnect issue, obviously, it's talking about the class action lawsuit and Trevon James coming out the gate, already calling him a scumbag. Um, so I'm taking it that this guy is somehow he feels cheated by Trevon James. So let's continue. I went and did a little bit of investigation. I've been seeing him. He's still posting all these Ponzi schemes. He's moved on to, uh, I think, Lang Connect and uh, Davor and some other weird new ones. So uh, because he's still actively trying to hurt people and make them lose money, we decided that we're going to figure out where he's at. All right. So I would like to address what he just said. He said Trayvon is moving on to Lend Connect, other lending platforms that he feels are Ponzi scams. Now, if you're smart and you feel that lending programs are a good fit for you, so, uh, uh, you know, so be it. Um, but he's already coming out the gate saying that Trevon is actively promoting these other lending platforms because he's trying to swindle people out of their money. The last time I checked, when you make a video and you put a link in the description that you're not forcing anybody to use your link. Um, you're not forcing anybody to actually sign up and you're definitely not forcing people to put Bitcoin into the platform and utilizing the platform. So I don't really understand what he means by scamming other people. Like I, I, I don't understand that. You know what I mean? Like to me, scamming somebody is completely different than, um, than affiliate marketing it is a big difference. Uh, sometimes these idiots don't understand that. Let's keep, keep going. So uh, we started with some older posts, right? You can see right here. This is a BMW he bought with your money, money he made off of scamming you in this Ponzi scheme. <laughs> All right. So he said he bought a car using your money, your money that he made off this Ponzi scheme. Again, that's misinformation. How do you, how, the only way that he made or bought something with your money is if he pretended that he was BitConnect and the owner and he owned, like he owned the company. Like this thing was his entire brainchild. Like he owns it. All the money was coming directly to him and he was spending it. If your, if your gripe with the guy is because he was successful at getting people to sign up, under his uh his referral link if that's your beef then that's a completely different issue right it's a completely different issue you didn't force anybody to do anything you either click the link you went to the site and you said yeah that sounds good looks good i'm going to use this referral but you always have a choice even if you sign up with bitconnect you didn't have to sign up with a sponsor so already his argument is is it, it lets me know that he's biased um because he's hurt he bought this BMW, right? So I'm looking, and here's a picture of him. Here he is with his BMW. 
There's other pictures you can see on all his social media of him like counting money in it. And you can see the Beamer logo. So uh, if you look at the Beamer though, you can see right here it says Myrtle Beach. So that was our first clue. He's somewhere in South Carolina, right? So now Trayvon Brown, a.k.a. Trayvon James, somewhere in South Carolina. So that's the other thing that bothers me now. So now he's putting the guy's full name, um, government name out there. And he's attempting to track him down. Uh, wow. For entertainment purposes. So to make sure that this is true, I dug further, right? So I went to his Twitter. And on his Twitter, he's got this video of him in the mall. I'm at the mall. Let me turn this shit down. So you can see that there's identifiable things, right? Here's a sleep number store. And... There's a J.C. Penny right here. Now, if you look, I went and looked for the malls in Myrtle Beach because that's where he bought his car at, right? So check out the floor pattern, right? I'm skipping this ahead here because um, he's basically it's, showing you, know, you how he into, is to obsessed and, and went so through the trouble of trying video, to find out what mall Trevon was shopping at. <laughs> and you got the sleep numbers. Come down. I mean, he did his he did his bottom, research. Sleep Coastal, so for somebody Coastal who's doing this for entertainment in purposes, Beach video. Today. Look, he even tracked the dude he's down. still pumping scams and all that shit. If you look, uh, actually in his last video, he's got all his, his referral links to other new Ponzi schemes and shit. So he's still ripping you off. Now, he's in this hotel room that he bought with your money. And he tells you he's in a hotel room. How is he ripping people off is what I'm trying to understand. Now, personally, I don't really like Trayvon. Um... I don't like, uh, I don't really know. I don't know. First of all, I don't know him as a person, but from what I do know of him, um, I didn't, I didn't care for him, but to say that he's scamming people or he's ripping people off, he's staying in a hotel with your money. Again, it's completely ass backwards. Unless he told you, give me BTC and I will invest it for you. And pay you directly, like as a middleman throughout, uh, not, uh, you know, in between the company, then I can understand you saying this dude is a scam artist. He fucking took my money. He's taking your money. That would be different. The simple fact that you decided to sign up with BitConnect <laughs> and you supposedly lost your money is that that's just crazy. You know what I mean? Like he he hasn't so taken I anybody's money for identifiers at Myrtle Beach, and I tracked down the hotel that he's staying in. He tracked okay, down so the look hotel. Look at this bedhead right here, and this Myrtle Beach. He's gonna show you how he did more South research. Carolina, see, hotel bedhead. So then uh, I look further <laughs> in the video, right? Live streaming on D Live. I think it comes up. At the room. See the room? Oh. Yeah. So he uh, he's right here. See? see? Damn. I don't know if this. Is He's doing the. Uh, he's doing his research. He's showing yeah, basically. The lawyers know. I know a lot of people are getting involved in this class action lawsuit. He's staying in this hotel on the money he made off of you guys, and uh, just as a refresher, this is what he looks like. This is ugly ass girlfriend. Um, I'm not gonna get involved over here, wow. but yeah. So if you see a dude walking with a chick that looks like this, it's probably Trayvon. All right, so he's getting people to go to his hotel to find the dude. Um, he's putting his family into it and uh, he's obviously upset he did say something that kind of made sense he's staying in a hotel that he made off of you guys that is somewhat true he didn't take your money he made money off of you um basically that's how the referral system works every time you put in money into bitconnect whether it was a hundred dollars ten dollars your sponsor got a percentage bonus from bitconnect based on that loan they didn't take it directly from you or in what you were depositing but bitconnect paid it uh as a bonus so if you put in a hundred dollars he, your sponsor would get like 7% or whatever percentage it was, depending on your level. So in essence, yes, 
the thousands and thousands of referrals that he had, he was making money off of their contributions and reinvestments to the platform. He was making money, extra money off of them. He was also making money with his own, uh, what do you call it, with his own interest uh, for uh, all the loans that he had in BitConnect. That's how it works. So even though he is making a lot of money, or he was making a lot of money, I still don't understand where this whole video is constituting uh, the, the the pillaging, you know what I'm saying, the, the hunt for this said individual or any other said individual when, again, these people weren't directly responsible for you, quote-unquote, losing money. Um, so let's go ahead and continue see what he has to say. And uh, if you want to go say what's up to him, He's in Myrtle Beach. I got a feeling he probably bought his house in Myrtle Beach too. He just bought a new house with your money. And uh, it's definitely an upgrade from his apparent apartment and uh, food stamps that he was living on. So he's likely going to be living in Myrtle Beach, but right now he's staying in this hotel with your money. Right here, Ocean's One, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Again, like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, scumbag tracker professional he's not a scumbag tracker professional he's just a scumbag tracker amateur um again he's pinpointing you and urging you for entertainment purposes only to to, to track him down and to do what to say what's up to, to what are you gonna do you know what i'm saying like it's crazy what you do with this is your business this is not advice and uh yeah, good luck to everybody that got scammed. All right, so he's saying do something at your own risk with your own judgment. He's not going to be responsible. Yet he's making a video advocating that you go and approach this individual, Trayvon. That sounds kind of like an oxymoron. It sounds kind of stupid, actually. So basically what I'm thinking is, is that if anybody goes out and finds Trevon and does something to him or his family, I guess you can go back and blame this guy for making a video that encouraged it, even though he said he wasn't advocating it, but he was letting you know. That doesn't even make sense. So basically, yeah, he's he can be held responsible if something happens to him. Right, because that's what he's advocating, even though he's trying to say at the same time that he's not. Um, my, my heart really goes out to you that these fucking assholes were uh, basically telling you you could print free money while they're racking in on your referrals. And that doesn't even make any sense. They told you now that you could print free money while they while they racked it in, raked it in. BitConnect had nothing to do with printing money. What is what is he talking about? I don't think this guy really even understands how the lending processes work. And they, they all knew this was a scam. There's no way they didn't. Uh, don't give me that bullshit. They were blocking comments on their videos that were saying it was a scam. They were deleting comments. They knew what was going on all along, and all they cared about was dollar signs. So these people fucked over a lot of good people who were just trying to make ends meet for their family. And uh, they ended up becoming millionaires because of it. So, by his claim, he's saying that most of the people that got into BitConnect were trying to, quote-unquote, feed their families, um, make ends meet. I'm I'm seriously confused now because... Cryptocurrency, just like the stock market, is an investment playground. It is not a place where you go to make ends meet. Now, if you are a broker and that's your job, that's how, excuse me, that's how you make ends meet. You're still providing a service within the stock market realm, right? So you're not necessarily there investing your money all the time. You're working for other people who want to invest their money. So 
as a broker, you do have some of that responsibility, right? Because if I bring you my money and I and I trust you to 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 buy and pick trades and uh, to buy sell trade uh, different stocks to make me a profit in the end, therefore making you a profit because uh, you get a percentage, then that would make you kind of responsible. But that's not even complete. That's not even what this is. You're telling me that people trying to make ends meet were in BitConnect. So I'm confused here. What do these people do to get money? Um, what do these people do to to make a living? You have to have money first before you can invest it. So where do they get money b before they went into BitConnect? That's what I don't. That's what I don't get. So I, I don't buy that about hardworking people trying to make ends meet, feed their families. That's that's stupid. And they become millionaires for it. They became millionaires because they got a lot of people to sign up. Uh, using their referral links and that's the end of it really i mean if that's a crime for anybody then i guess so be it but the offense of getting people not forcing people but putting a link out there and saying hey sign up uh join you know join my team if that's if that's a crime then hey they, maybe they ought to just get rid of referrals everywhere in the world, period. Because, you know, referrals don't work and referrals are bad. They're, they're just as guilty as BitConnect is, and you can't convince me otherwise. So I hope this class action lawsuit prevails. I hope some people go up and see Trayvon in South Carolina. Let them know how you feel. And uh, I might even be making a trip down there myself. Because even though I wasn't invested, I feel like people like this need to be put on blast. And maybe I'll make a live stream of it. I'm not going to hurt anybody or anything. I'm just going to confront them like a journalist. So uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, Trayvon James. This is him and his scumbag family. They're all living off of your money right wow. now. Wow. And they're living the high life. I just saw a picture of a giant fucking ring he bought for this bitch. And uh, wow. that's all your money. All right, guys. So again, um, crazy. Crazy, 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 right? Cursing his family out. All kinds of stuff. Like, to me, it just doesn't even make sense. Again, the guy did not steal your personal money. What happens here is 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 very textbook. And honestly, the class action lawsuit is not going to go any fucking where. And I'm going to tell you why. Technically, technically, BitConnect did not steal your money. BitConnect released your loans the part that you're claiming to have been stolen. They released your loans in the same form of cryptocurrency that you bought in or put loans into the platform. So to make a loan, you had to buy BitConnect tokens. How did you do that? You bought BitConnect tokens with your Bitcoin on the exchange. So when they released your loans, they released them in the form of BCC or BitConnect tokens. You then got your money back. Now, the part that's tricky is people are pissed because they didn't give BitConnect didn't give them their loans back in the form of Bitcoin because Bitcoin would still have value. Instead, excuse me, instead, people are upset because by the time they got their BCC tokens from their loans that were taken out of loan, you know, they, they, they took the loans out and gave everybody their shit back in BCC. The problem is, and where, where the anger comes from, is that people, a lot of people did not get a chance to sell off their BCC tokens at a higher value when it was around 450. Instead, a lot of people got caught on that downtrend 
where the token was worth less than 50 bucks. That's where people are mad. So now, so they feel, they feel like they've been cheated because they didn't get the same value back. Well, if you didn't get the same value back, that's nothing you can file a lawsuit over. <laughs> you are every people who exchange the token have ultimate power over what the token is worth, right? So you can't blame them, people who promoted it, because the price of the the, the coin went down. That's dumb. That is stupid. There's no guarantee that the price is going to be worth anything. If anything, you're still you still made money because when BitConnect tokens first came out in the ICO phase, they were worth 16 cents. You look at the price of BitConnect tokens today, it's worth a lot more than 16 cents. So technically, you really have, if it, unless it goes below 16 cents, you, you haven't really lost anything. You know what I mean? But, or that I would say that you didn't lo not lose anything, but you are a victim of the market, period. Your Bitcoin tomorrow could be worth $2. Are you then going to go find somebody to, to, to put into a lawsuit because the price of the, your, your coin went down? That's what I'm saying. People are upset because, A, they didn't win as much as they thought they were going to win. And, B, they got tired of these motherfuckers. They got tired of Trevon, Craig, Jan, uh, Craig Grant, Crypto Nick. They got tired of seeing those guys making so much money with the platform and they seem relatively unhurt by the platform removing its lending platform. That is why a lot of people are mad. They're mad because they didn't get out the game as rich as these guys. And they want somebody to blame. At the end of the day, when shit happens with anything, somebody is always pointing, looking around, ready to point the finger at somebody else for their stupidity or their misjudgment or their dumb decision to get involved with something that didn't work out. That's what people do. Instead of looking and saying, you know what? I knew this shit was too good to be true. I, I, or I, you know, I knew what it was about and I, I thought it was going to last longer. You know, instead of just saying, Hey, you know what? I, I, I made a bad decision, man. Um, and I'm going to stay away from these types of programs from now on. Instead of saying that, people are just looking for somebody's body to burn. That's it. That's why you see these class action lawsuits trying to happen, which doesn't even make sense. Uh, like I said, the fact that BitConnect, if they're illegally selling securities, if that's what they were Ill illegally doing, then they had a choice to make. Either satisfy the state or don't. Instead, they just said, you know what? We're going to just take away the whole lending platform. We're done doing the lending platform. They didn't do anything wrong. They made a choice that you didn't like and you feel like they should be responsible for it because they've made so much money doing the lending platform and they're no longer giving you a chance to make money that way. Because nobody was upset. Nobody was crying and complaining about how much money they were making while BitConnect was running the uh, lending platform. But as soon as you cut that off, everybody's pissed off. They want somebody to blame. And uh, unfortunately, it's these people who are on the forefront of promoting. Um, again, you can't be mad at them because BitConnect decided to do something. You're mad at them because they're still winning. And you've lost some money. You've lost the value of your token. And that's not their fault. So uh, I know it's kind of a long video, but you know I just wanted to kind of you know, put it out there and say that, you know, first and foremost, everybody has a right to be upset, but you also have a responsibility to be upset for the right reason. And a lot of people's videos that I'm seeing trying to blame Trevon and Craig and all these people um, for their, their own personal decisions to get involved with something is just absolutely ludicrous to me. Uh, you know, it's absolutely ludicrous to me. So people don't want to take responsibility. So it all boils down to, but I'm signing off again. I am not your financial advisor. I am my own financial advisor and I make my decisions based on my own judgment and research. 
And as we've seen over the last year, um, some of my decisions have not been very good ones, right? Um, I've lost, I've got burned a few times, many times, um, but I've also won a lot too. So, you know, it, it, it just goes to show you that in this space, there are no guarantees. If you're trying to sue a company because they made you a guarantee, then you were stupid. You were too stupid to get involved knowing, thinking that there would be a guarantee. Um, and that's nobody else's fault. And if I was a judge, I would laugh in your face and tell you, hey, I mean, did you read the fine print? Did you read the terms and conditions? Oh, wait a minute. You're saying this company is doing something fraudulent? Okay, did you knowingly get involved with them even though you knew? Because you read the fine print that it was not uh, kosher to do in the state of wherever you're at, Texas or wherever uh, sent the cease and desist. That's what I'm saying. People aren't really thinking that shit through. They're, they want to blame somebody so bad, but they're not really seeing how their involvement, their copious involvement is illegal at the same time. You know what I mean? Like I said, they just want to blame somebody. Blame yourself. I'm out.